Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today I'm going to read conclusions of a paper that features Valentina Zarkova. The link will be in the description box for the full paper. In this paper we reproduce the summary curve of solar activity for the last 3,000 years that shows a remarkable resemblance to the sunspot and terrestrial activity reported in the past millennia. These include the most significant grand minima, Maunder minimum from 1645 to 1715, the Wolf minimum, which was 1280 to 1350 AD, Oort minimum, which was 1040 through 1080 AD, Homer minimum was 800 to 900 BC, also pointing to the grand maxima, the medieval warm period from 900 to 1200, the Roman warm period from 400 to 10 BC, and so on. We also verify the extrapolated summary curve as the solar activity curve by available pre-telescope observations of large sunspots in the 14th century, by increase of terrestrial temperature, and by the intense terrestrial auroras seen in the 14th through the 16th centuries, and by the butterfly diagrams simulated and observed for monitor minimum. We predict the upcoming modern grand minimum in 2020 through 2055, which will have the solar activity slightly higher and its duration twice as shorter than in the Maunder minimum of the 17th century. We argue the alleged sporer minimum derived of isotopes of carbon and beryllium. Beryllium is radioactive isotope. It is formed in the Earth's atmosphere mainly by cosmic ray spallation of nitrogen and oxygen. Clearly indicates the time dating technique is likely to be produced by a strong increase of the terrestrial background radiation caused by galactic cosmic rays of a powerful supernova. The supernova Vela Jr., which occurred about 1290 close to the Earth, over 700 light years, is likely to strongly affect its atmosphere and biosphere that led to the wrong carbon dates and thus solar activity reconstruction for the period after it occurred in 1450 through 1550. The cosmic rays from the supernova could explain the decrease of the beryllium in the Greenland ice in the northern hemisphere in line with solar activity only. While at the same time, it can explain an increase of the isotope in Antarctica located in the southern hemisphere affected by cosmic rays of Vela Jr. supernova in the southern sky. The supernova can be also a reason of the epidemics of plague and other diseases occurred in 14th and 15th centuries. And by the way, Mari is going to do a piece about the connection between these minimums and plagues and diseases. In the northern and southern hemisphere in general and in China in particular, and it's talking about these ep epidemics. These epidemics in China combined with Mongolian invasion and expansion of the Great Chinese Wall could be the unfortunate reasons which eliminated a pool of people in China trained to observe sunspots with the naked eye. In addition, the supernova observed by Tycho Brahe and Kepler at the end of the 16th and the beginning of the 17th century brought additional powerful cosmic rays, which in turn affected the Earth's atmosphere and its biosphere, creating a very strong nuclear background, different from the standard one accepted in the carbon dating. This increased background intensity can definitely introduce the time dating error of a few hundred years, providing a plausible explanation why spore minimum did not exist in the 15th through 16th centuries in the solar magnetic field summary curve shown in figure one derived with the principal component analysis and symbolic regression classification. Given a number of grand minimum and grand maxima in the summary curve, which correctly match some of the well-known minima and maxima in the terrestrial temperature and carbon dating data, combined with the other means of verification discussed above, naked eye sunspots, auroras. We have very good reason to reinforce our previous findings that the basic solar activity is produced by the two magnetic waves, called principal components caused by double solar dynamo effect. These waves are shown to be generated by the dipole magnetic sources located in two inner and outer layers of the solar interior. This finding also emphasizes the fact that solar activity has a very well maintained periodicity of their principal dynamo waves produced by dipole magnetic sources which is maintained over three millennia reflecting a very stable dynamo health of the sun. We need to emphasize that the real solar activity 
can be a superposition of a large number of waves generated not only by dipole, but also by quadruple, sextuple, or other magnetic sources that will be of scope for forthcoming studies. Again, the link to this entire paper is in the description. Please like and share. We'll talk soon.